Okay friends, is there anything better than summertime recipes in the crock pot? Very little cleanup, very little prep work. You don't have to turn your oven on and you can go enjoy your entire day, be outside, do what you want to, and come home to a delicious meal. I mean, does it get any better than that? Let's get started on these recipes. Pam let me down with the crack cake. There is a slight bubbling and fizzing reaction. Okay, so for this first one, we are making cheesy chicken tacos. I've made something very similar to this before, but never with like the salsa con queso cheese dip, which is just gonna take it to the next level. Very few ingredients, so easy to make. Let me show you how we're gonna do it. Okay, so for this recipe, you're gonna need some chicken breast, taco seasoning. You're also gonna need some little green chilies. You will need a can of Rotel, a jar of this um, salsa con queso, and then also a can of chicken broth. So go ahead and lightly spray your crock pot and then add your chicken breast in and top those with that taco seasoning. Now to our bowl, we're gonna go ahead and add in our chilies, our chicken broth, and our rotel. Stir that all together until it's nice and combined and then we'll pour this over the chicken. And for this chicken broth, we're just doing about half a cup. You don't need it too much. Okay, so pop a lid on that, let it cook on high for like four or five hours, or you can do it on low for like six to eight. And then once it has just about like 20 minutes left, we're gonna drain off some of that liquid and then add in our cheese salsa con queso, give that a good stir, and then this will be ready. I haven't decided yet if I wanna eat it like over top of cilantro lime rice, like as a bowl with all kinds of toppings, or as tacos. You could totally do it either way, but both sound so good to me. Okay, so this has been cooking all day, y'all. Our entire house smells so good. Bunky has like come downstairs multiple times and been like, what are you cooking? It smells amazing, and it does. So this is what it's looking like. I probably just fogged y'all out. Just barely, we recovered fast. <laughs> okay, um, so this chicken should be fork tender. Yes, it is. Now the recipe does say to drain off some of this liquid. I don't know though, y'all. I kind of want to keep it. What else is going in there? Sorry, gosh, y'all so dark. Um, the queso. Okay, we're gonna drain off a little bit, but I'm gonna leave most of it. Let's just skim a little bit off the top. Okay. Nothing like using my <laughs> coffee mug. App State coffee cup <laughs> from this morning. Cause see, I'm afraid if we get too much, we're gonna be taking away all that like goodness of the rotel and stuff, the peppers. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it'd probably be a little too soupy. Yeah. I think all of that has done its job at this point. Yeah. I might be just good enough to drink. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and shred this chicken up. Gosh, y'all, this is like legit fork tender. And I am going to leave kind of like some bigger chunks in here because Bunky and I um, decided that we're going to eat this actually in a bowl versus a taco. And I did pick up this rice today. It's the Old El Paso cilantro lime, which sounds so good. It reminds me of like the um, chipotle rice. So I'm hoping this is delicious. I'm gonna put in our queso. That's that special sauce. Special sauce. Now this sauce is like Ooh. my favorite. But remember like last summer we were like obsessed with this? Yeah. We would get it every single week from the grocery store, almost I feel like with last summer, and just eat it with like Ruffles potato chips. Mm-hmm. Oh we, ha we had it quite often. It's so, so good. What happened to that? It just like stopped. I know, we stopped doing it. Maybe it makes me kind of sad. So anyway, I'm gonna put in most of this jar in here and then stir it and let this cook for just like maybe 10 or 15 more minutes. Um, and then we'll go ahead and cook our rice while this finishes cooking. Okay, rice takes 20 minutes. Okay. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put this in there and then let it cook, rice cook. It'll yeah. all come together at once. Mm -hmm. Woo, honey. That's just some goodness right there, okay? This went from... This went from like zero to hero. I mean, it wasn't zero, but let me tell you. Ordinary to extraordinary. Yes, exactly. Okay, give this a good stir. Oh my gosh, I just wanna take some like tortilla chips to this, you know? Seriously though. I mean, honestly, you could just make like nachos out of this. 
That sounds so good. Y'all, this looks incredible now. When I start singing, that's when you know I'm excited. <laughs> Okay, we are ready for assembly. It all looks scrumptious. Dinner service is on. It's on. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go rice first. Am I am I just putting this on the bottom? Yeah, like make like a chipotle bowl, you know? Like you know whenever you go to Chipotle, the first thing they ask you, you want white or brown rice? Chicken S or beef? Cilantro rice, please. <laughs> Taste that and tell us what you think, like without putting all the other stuff on it first. Cause you know, we like their other that same brand, like their cheesy rice oh, that we'll use for ACP, yeah. so good. So I assume this one's probably really good too. That is good. Is the cilantro like overpowering or no? No, it's very subtle, but okay. very, it's very nice. Okay, like good. It, the rice has good flavor. Okay, good. Oh, there's a, there's a scoop for me, all the tomato action. Yeah, you take all the tomatoes. <laughs> We've got a little bit of shredded lettuce to add, and then some sour cream, lime wedge, more cheese. Oop, look at that beauty! <laughs> <laughs> Were you trying to make that pretty? Yeah. Presentation. Presentation. Mmm. The toppings. With a little bit of lettuce in there. Yeah. Because it adds a little bit of texture. And like that crunch and kind of cold yeah. crispiness. Mm-hmm. Mm, I'm excited. That is very good. That cheese that we added. Uh huh. Just velvety goodness. <laughs> I think it would be really, really good in a taco. With your little I, toppings on. I think either way. I, it'd probably be really good in a corn tortilla. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. A nice addition to it. Uh huh. Would be like the little multicolored tortilla strips that you can buy. Yeah. You just put those right on top. On the bowl? Uh -huh. That is a genius idea. Mm. But the lime juice is really important, I think. Yeah, to give it some like brightness. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'm so excited I'm gonna my own bowl now. Okay, these are absolutely delicious. I will meet you guys right back here in the morning. We're gonna make our second recipe. And this one is actually a dessert and it is gonna be so scrumptious. Bunky doesn't even know what it is. I'm gonna surprise him. Okay, good morning. I am in the kitchen. I've been unloading the dishwasher and just trying to tidy up a little bit, but I am ready to get started on this recipe. I say ready, but I actually have to run to the grocery store because I started pulling everything out and this recipe calls for baking powder. And I looked at the bottom of mine and it is a year out of date, y'all. That is bad. So I gotta run to the grocery store and get some more of that. But this recipe also calls for buttermilk, which of course, you know, we don't keep on hand, but you can make your own buttermilk just using milk and either lemon juice or like distilled vinegar. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that first before I run to the grocery store so it can kind of like marry together and get like a really good flavor. We are making a blueberry and peach cobbler in the crock pot. That just like screams summertime to me and I, I cannot wait. My bunkie is going to love this and we're gonna top it with some ice cream. Y'all, it's gonna be so good. Okay, so the recipe only calls for one third cup of buttermilk. So I'm just gonna pour it to right there and then just put the tiniest little splash of vinegar, like the tiniest. Ooh, I'm scared. Okay, one more, that's good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna swirl it around, put it in the fridge, and then this should be good to go whenever I get back. Okay, y'all, my bunky is to the rescue. Yeah, Google. Well, he just Googled a solution, hopefully. It says to get like hot water and what well, says half a cup of hot water and then you put like, I think it said like half a teaspoon uh -huh. of the baking powder in there. And if it still like bubbles and you see like a reaction, then it's still good. But if it doesn't do anything, then it's not good anymore. Okay, so before I go to the grocery store, we're testing this. And it says if you're doing baking soda, you need to add just like a little bit of vinegar to it. Uh-huh. Because apparently baking soda needs an acidic yes. component in order to have a reaction. Okay, that's Bunky's tip of the day. Thank you for teaching us something. There you go, people. Okay, let's try it. Okay, this is hot water. Very hot. Yep. What am I supposed to see? What am I supposed to see? Like a, bu a bubbling or fizzing reaction. 
there is a slight bubbling and fizzing reaction. It's slight, but it is there. <gasps> Can we use it? Do, don't you have another one? Do y'all see it? No, this is it. It's slight. Do it again. Okay, 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 hang on, hang on. <laughs> yeah, I did it again. It's just very light. It's not like, wow. I'd be curious to see what a fresh container does when you do that test. Okay, I'm just gonna go to the grocery store. <laughs> Okay, I'm back, I've got the goods, I'm ready to get started on this. So we're gonna go ahead and make our blueberry and peach filling first, then we'll make the cobbler, then we'll get it all in the crock pot. Okay, so for the fruit filling, of course you're gonna need peaches and blueberries. These can be fresh or frozen. So you can kind of make this all year round depending on like what's in season or you can just get frozen if it's not. My grocery store did not have any fresh peaches, so I'm just gonna use these frozen ones. And you're also gonna need some vanilla extract, some cornstarch and then some sugar. Also, I want to mention that I am semi eyeballing this and kind of not halfing it, but halfing the recipe just because it makes a ton and it's just me and Bunky and we're actually leaving to go out of town in like two days. So I don't want to have like too many leftovers that we're going to waste. So anyway, keep that in mind, but I will have the actual original recipe linked down below for y'all. And also I want to mention that you do not have to thaw the um, frozen fruit, if you choose to use frozen, you can do it just as normal. I definitely needed a bigger bowl. <laughs> But the recipe does say if you can't get it all incorporated in this bowl, no worries because you'll be able to stir it again once we get it in the crock pot. Okay, that's as good as it's getting. Let's get started on the cobbler. Okay, Bunky is coming to rescue to help me make the cobbler, but I gotta tell you what we're actually making. I kinda just told you. You just said cobbler. We are making a blueberry and peach cobbler in the crock pot. You're serious? I'm dead serious. Blueberry and peaches. Yes. This is gonna be your dream. That sounds really good. Okay, I need you to get us some butter out and cut it into tiny little pea shapes. R pea shapes, Bunky? <laughs> what am I gonna do, use a spoon? You're gonna have to use oh. whatever you whatever you can think of. I think I have a toy that I can use. Show me. No, I'm kidding. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. We may or may not have it anymore due to the move. Look in that drawer. Not seeing what I'm looking for. Oh no, what is it? I thought we used to have like this little tiny like melon baller. Oh, we do somewhere. I don't, know, I don't see it. I don't know. I think if we cut it into teeny tiny little pea sized cubes, it'll be just fine. Exactly, just like a little <laughs> cube, not like a circle. You mean you were literally thinking a circle? Yeah, but I was just playing. Bunky, just a little cube, you silly goose. But, uh, okay. Also known as, um, Spanish word of the day, mantequilla. How do you know this? I just know random words. <laughs> Most, mostly food. Yes, okay. <clears throat> As a car, sugar. You're hilarious, okay. Well, this is perfect, that's, that's I, exactly what I'm going for. I did one single, and then I'd cut this into little slabs, and I was like, I can stack those up on top of each other. So I've already gone three this way, then we're gonna go three this way. Love it. And then look at that. That's perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our flour. So that's one and one fourth cup. And I decided that we're just gonna make the correct amount of cobbler. We'll just have a little bit less fruit. But that's fine with me. Okay, one third cup of granulated sugar. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. A half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm just gonna eyeball it because I really don't mind if there's a little bit more cinnamon in there. Okay, that looks good. Is that good? Oh uh, yeah. One more. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then one fourth teaspoon of salt. Okay, Monkey, this is where I need your butter. I cannot. Y'all, please look at this butter. Oh my goodness. Okay, pop it down in there. Butter is in, and then the last thing we need to put in is just our um, buttermilk, which I have sitting right here. Is that homemade buttermilk? It is me. Hey, girlfriend. Yeah, this is homemade. 
Now it says to mix this with a fork until this dough comes together. Like until the butter's mixed in? Well, just till it's like, you know, a dough. Oh, because you want the little chunks of butter to kind of like... Right, like we're making... Make little... Dough. Little butter bombs of, <laughs> of joy. Yes. Okay, do you want to do this part or do you want me to do this part? Because now we're assembling this. I'll take credit for the assembly. Oh, you want to do it? Okay, okay. I'm hey. very confident in the outcome of this. <laughs> Plus, I did such a fantastic job incorporating that topping mix. This is true. That's not. That's actually not the topping. It's the bottom layer. Oh, the fruit's going on the top? The fruit's going on top. Oh. Okay, okay. Can I tell you what to do? Okay, first we got to lightly spray with our Pam. When I say lightly, I mean give it like a good liberal spray. Pam let me down with the crack cake. <laughs> So. Okay, this is true, but you know what? Everyone told me about this other cooking spray. I saw. You saw? Yeah. We gotta get some of that. like Baker's Joy or Baker's Secret. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Or you could just butter your pan and flour it a little it. bit. Okay, pan's not gonna let us down, so go ahead and spray that. A little okay. extra there. Love it. Then take your um, cobbler dough and crumble it with your hand all over the bottom. So oh, we have like an even layer. Oh, it's all, it's crumbled up in there. Okay, well just, you know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> we got like little, look at those little oh, tasty Cody butter bombs, you know? I know. This is Bunky's recipe, okay? Butter balls, not the turkey. <laughs> Daisy Mae, what is going on, girl? She's like, I want to come have fun too. Okay, zhuzh it out till we have like a knock, good even knock layer. Knock it around just a bit. Now we're going to try and give this another little stir. I should have used a bigger bowl. You um, could just dump it in this bowl. Actually, that's a great idea. Yeah. Since this bowl's already dear tay. That is genius. Okay, give that a good little stir. Oh, don't forget those guys. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Bonkey. I know. I know. This is going to be insane. Are these peaches frozen? Yeah. Are the blueberries frozen? No. Pour that right on top. Dump this in there. Yeah. Even layer here. Okay. Well, it might be a little more peachy on one side and more blueberry on the other. We'll try and get some more blueberries over here. This just looks so pretty. Okay, so that is it. We're gonna pop a lid on this and let it cook on high for about two and a half to three hours, or you can cook it on low for about four to four and a half hours. And this is gonna be ready to eat. moment we have all waited for is here I'm so excited I have been smelling this <sighs> y'all it looks just amazing mm. oh my gosh okay I want some of that dough look at how beautiful it came right up out of that um take us take a scoop and, and flop it over for us okay do you see oh. the crust I mean this just looks like a million bucks. Wow, I'm so impressed by this. Look at the crock pot. Like it did not stick, it came right up. Pam came through for us. Pam came through, except for on these edges right here. Put a big dollop of ice cream on here. And for me, like one of my favorite desserts, and y'all know I'm not like a big dessert person, but I love like a warm brownie with vanilla ice cream, like that hot and cold. Mm. It's so good. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be the sweetest wife ever <laughs> and let Bunky taste test this first. Even though my mouth is watering. Okay. Have a little bit of everything in there. Okay. Mmm. That is delish. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I really like this the uh the little cin the cinnamoniness come through. Yeah. Mmm. You can taste it in there? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. How's the dough? A very good consistency. Oh, here's a little edge piece. And I feel like the ice cream is like a must have with it, right? Oh yeah, that or like, you know, some ready whip. Mm, yes. I mean, that would that would do the trick, but vanilla ice cream is- You can't go wrong. Exceedingly the far superior option. <laughs> <laughs> I just cannot even get over this. And it was so easy to make. Oh yeah, those blueberries, Warm little pearls of good. Yes. 
I got to I'm so excited. Funky. Mm. Okay. Here's my thoughts. What are you loving? Just like B said, I get the slightest little hint of cinnamon and that really is so good. But also, like I was saying, like I'm not a huge dessert fan because I can't take like too much sweetness. And this is like perfectly balanced. It's not overly sweet at all. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. This is so good. A real, a real crowd pleaser. Yes, like y'all have got to try this, especially if you're having like a birthday party, cookout, get together, Memorial Day, Fourth of July. This would be such a great dessert to take or just make it for you and your family on like a Sunday after church. So, so, so good. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed these. If you wanna see more summer crock pot recipes, let me know down below in the comments. As always, I would love for you to subscribe. If you're new, give this one a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all.